Okay, well that was frustrating. I'm back. Not sure how much you guys saw because, gosh, I watched the recording that that, but right before I shut down, restarted my computer, I watched the recording and I couldn't even fast forward to the end. I couldn't slide the slider over to see the end to see where it cut off. So weird. Anyway, let's see if we could save this now after making a change. My gosh. Mask that off. Save. Hooray. Okay. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, I don't press recall. I don't press control to reselect that mask. Okay. It does allow me to. Okay. Okay, I gotta repaint all this over here. <sighs> My gosh. It's not that big of a deal. It wasn't that much really. Let's just get this in quick. Make it Let's just look at this as an opportunity to improve what I did before. <laughs> Gotta look on the positive side. Oh my gosh. I hate when crap doesn't work like that. Okay, save. It's kind of fun, I got this one curling this way while that one's curling this way. Feels like a, a little bit of a vortex, like, you know, the top of an ice cream cone thing, like, it has movement. That's good. This one over here, however, does not have much movement. Let's let's change that. Okay, this curve this way, and then this curve. This one curve this way. Let's go like this. There we go. Got a little. Got to make sound effects when you draw. This looks a little too... Okay. Save. All right. Now, let's do that next color. If I remember correctly, actually, I wanted to move these down. Not you, selection. Deselect. I wanted to move these down. Let's move them up too because. Need to see him over the top of my. 
actually. I only need to move them to here, right? Yeah. I just went up, up above my drawing. I want them pretty close so I could see them. Okay. All right, now let's just pick a color in here. It's a little brighter. Go back to this, add another layer. Yeah, okay. So, does fire have form? Doesn't really have, kind of has form sometimes. But it definitely has like gradients from dark to light, but those gradients are so like, what's the word, like scattered, like, Example, if you go into right here, there's a gradient from dark to light, but it's like that gradient is such a weird shape and it's all like, it's not like if you're, if you're rendering of a, a sphere, it goes from dark to light as you render that form, but the fire is form is like all over the place so it's it's okay I think you get what I'm saying like there's a light here and a light here and a light here and that light is all through here and then the darks a patch here and a patch here and a patch here and a patch here so it's You don't have to get too detailed and crazy with this because it's kind of just a sketch. I'm not going to like render this out so crazy. But it's the illusion of detail. We want to do that. So there might be some parts we want a little more. Feel like I'm getting too detailed. Let's back that up a bit. Just get it in there. I mean, that bit of detail up there might be enough to give me the illusion. So that's that's good. And we're just having fun. Just having fun. Throwing some color around. This is fun, actually. I'm really liking this. It feels sketchy. It's not so dang detailed. I really like this brush, too. Jeez. It like, kind of fits me. I'd love doing the sketchy sketch look. So, like, it really fits me. That's a little much. Looks more like water than it does fire. There we go. That's more like a wisp of. I guess they actually kind of behave similarly in ways. Water's heavy, so it's got some gravity to it. You could see the effects of gravity on it, while fire doesn't. The it defies gravity, so. 
it's different in that way, but you know, when you see a wave crest and the wind, like you could see the wind of the wave. Anyway, it's got that vapor that kind of comes off and it looks similar to this. this this is fun I love that dark blue background You guys saw it. I saved this earlier, and now all of a sudden it doesn't want to save anymore. I know the I know the solution to this. This hap I, I remember now. I have to save as. Save as. Just save it as tenacity two. And that works. And now we'll be working off of Tenacity 2 instead of this first one. Well, this, the other one. All right. Continuing. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so frustrating. I've, I had forgotten. I actually found a solution to that a while back. I, I forgot about that. So, well, let's go. Next layer. Now I'm doing, these layers are great, okay? Okay, I, I could get pretty easily confused by just the craziness of all the layers. It's sometimes frustrating. I like to keep it simple, like just painting all in one layer is great for me. There's no confusion. It feels quicker. It's just like drawing traditionally, which that's my background. But I know I know the benefits of painting with layers. Like the benefits are just like the things you can do. So I really want to learn and get better. And I feel like I've learned a ton since I really started getting going a few months back. Ooh, starting to glow. Some of that detail that I did earlier is kind of popping through. That's great. I do want to sh kind of show some form, right? Does it, fire doesn't really it has form it, it does like balloon out in areas and like so, so fire is an interesting thing like doesn't really have an, a hard edge but at the same time it like It uh, definitely has like some shape and some form. I gotta be careful to not completely disappear my fun little detail in the layers I already put down. This is fun. This is really coming. This is fun. I mean, we're not even like, I haven't even worked on the foreground yet. And this is like, I'm having a blast. And the cool thing is like, when I want to paint my background, I don't have to like paint around all this fire. This fire's like wispy and stuff. It's kind of see-through. Like that would suck. So my background's on another layer. I'm just going in paint. It's awesome. The benefits of layers, I know they exist. Well, of course they exist, but I mean like, I, they're awesome.
the downside for layers and Photoshop and all these, uh, all the control you have with it, the downside for me is decision making. Like, you have to really be careful not to get stuck in that endless cycle of revision and edit and my gosh that can be stupid never finishing anything that's really hard not to get stuck into still working on that I mean, that's true with traditional art as well, but at least traditional art, it's like, okay, I put it down. Like, I mean, you can do that. You can paint over, keep painting over, and keep painting over, but Photoshop makes it easy to get stuck in that. That's basically what I'm saying. Just checking OBS. It makes me freaks me out, man. That maybe I didn't press record or or my audio isn't recording. Gosh, I hope my audio is recording. <laughs> I feel like I have some good things to say. Like as I'm working along, like I don't know, somebody might get something from what I'm saying. I'm realizing now I need to cross the fire over the tree trunk, which I should paint the tree trunk. Let's get this other layer on this other tree first. I'll paint the, uh, I'll paint the tree trunks and go back over the top with another layer to get some wisps going over the top of the tree trunk. So, gosh, this is fun. fun when you don't have technical difficulties see there's a there's a stroke right over the tree trunk so I mean my thought is my thought is I need to paint in some tree trunks <laughs> that's my thought okay new layer these are gonna be dark but I don't want them to be okay so they'll be like the same value slightly darker than this the darkest part of the background but then when you go in we're gonna go down to the red because trees are reddish brownish uh, yeah and they aren't the background if they're the same color as the background there'll be a whole punch through right through I'm gonna make this slightly darker now just paint some tree trunks in here. I'm going to make it kind of past this where the line for the ground would be. I'm going to draw a little bit past because, you know, I'm going to paint the foreground. That's going to cover it. So let's look at some pine tree branches. A lot of them, they go straight out. Let's not be too descriptive here. Just suggest some go kind of up. It's kind of cool. So I could erase. I'm only on this layer with only these brush strokes that I just made. So like, it's not. 
it's not going to be a problem to just go in and erase, right? Looks more like a deciduous tree. Doesn't matter, I guess. Doesn't matter. Angle of that branch was bugging me, so I'll do more like that. Okay. That's probably good, I guess. I am going to go back to the Slayer and paint a little more, but then I'll come, I'll come back over. I'll come back over the branches. I can move that down to that tree trunk. What happens if I do that a couple layers? See? That's pretty cool. Maybe I should just leave it there. So I don't lose that. I'm going to name it real quick. And I need to paint the other one actually. So let's go back to that color. Make sure I'm on that trunk layer. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'm already behind that. That's funny. Okay, that's right. I'm just gonna move this up a couple of layers just so I can see, you know, some of the work I'm doing right now might be not not even show, but it's okay because It's just real important to get like the <clears throat> the feel for this in there. Let's go like that. Okay, that's pretty good. Let's get rid of that. It looks like the tree's splitting in two. Trees are fun. I've always enjoyed drawing trees. What's going on here? Just want to change the light. Here we go. Okay. Save. Looks pretty good. I'm gonna come back in here and kind of. It feels like the, oh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's a fire. It's like it's doing whatever. All right, let's go to here again. Yeah, and get that color. The swatches are nice because you can go back and sample a color that you used not too long ago. I could just eye drop it from my painting, but sometimes I get like. A mixture of two colors and then it's not as bright as the original color and, and then it's not you know it's like it's like accidentally grabbing on the wrong pastel stick or something I don't know that's too thick there we go This is great. Okay. Gosh, I love doing this. This is so fun. Okay, I'll share with you some of my life goals, all right? I think this is pretty obvious that all artists dream of making a living as a creative. 
that's my goal. I mean, gosh, I wouldn't take that much. I don't even make that much on the job I'm working right now, so it's like, good grief. I feel a lot of regret, too, in my life, which is sucks. I mean, I feel like I've had some opportunities in the past that I didn't fully grasp. I feel like I've been behind the curve on learning programs like this. And I should have been more... Uh, proactive in learning them and uh you know the name of this piece is tenacity having a little more tenacity when it comes to like learning these things and pursuing these things but i mean i'm trying to break out of that living out of regret thing and just do and that's what this is all about me getting into this again posting these youtube channel youtube videos helps with what am I trying to say it help, it just well it's it's accountability it's nice to like I, I don't know it's just I'm just having a lot of fun and that if anybody gets any value from this or whatever I'm painting on the same layer new layer please I hope I hope somebody gets some value from this But it's funny because I'm almost doing it for myself too. Like, it's nice to like talk and draw, and feels less lonely. That's for sure. Because art can be kind of lonely, right? Like, just sitting in your studio all, all day. Although I don't do that. <laughs> I wish I sat in my studio all day. That would be a dream. It's too stark. I gotta be kind of subtle with this color. Man, that's fun. This feels like I'm painting traditionally this is nice I like this how this is going oh my gosh. <sighs> I might raise this composition a little bit mm -hmm. extend the background out I get that I will. Will I do that now? Yes, I will. Okay, select. How do I manipulate this selection? Manipulating this selection. Disable light, oops, enable, delete, oh, okay, oh, that works, okay, but I want to extend it, I'll just draw a new, I'll just draw a new, new selection, I'll draw, okay, I need a ruler or something, another one here, See, nice and snappy. It snaps right to my. Okay, so how high? I'm thinking about right in. There, I just need a little bit of space. To give that rule. To give that. Gosh, I can't talk. To give that. Uh, I 
I just want to give that flower some room to breathe. Okay. We got our new... Why is that not... Mask it out. Mask. So I'm working, working, working. I go back to here. I do have to press control. What the flip? Okay. Back on the background. Let's paint a little slow because I don't want these paint brushes to bog down my paint brush strokes to bog down my computer here. Let's do save. Save. Save everybody. Got through that mess, so I don't want to screw that up. There we go. Yeah, I think that works a lot better. Giving my flower a little room to breathe. The, the top of the painting was right above that flower. And that's the focal point. That's like... That's going to be the thing right there. So... Watch, look at that, whoa. <laughs> I love the fact that I could just paint right behind those flames and it's not even a big deal, it's so cool. Sample some of that blue. Oh, see that's great, see that, that is the issue with just sampling eyedrop from your background. It's not a big deal, because that gray is probably a good, I probably need some gray in there, but, I don't know, it's a little, well, we're going to do that later. So let's, yeah, see, I just, I can't stand it. Okay, I want to get back to some saturation here. A little better. Okay, that's good. What's happening here? Why is that coloring over? Oh, wait, what is that layer? Okay. Oh, I'm just gonna combine these two layers. I see what's happening. What happens if I combine these? Am I gonna lose my layer mask? I don't know, let's see. Group, not group, merge, merge layers. I did lose the layer mast. I still have my selection. Also, lost a lot of my, I think that was a multiply layer. Let's look at it. Normal. This one was multiply layer. Let's change this one to a multiply layer. See what it does. Darkened a little bit. Now let's merge them, see what that looks like. Hmm. Still does a, does a weird dark dark thing. Hmm. Because my layer is normal now. Why? Change to normal. I changed that other layer to multiply. Anyway, okay. Layer mask. Boom. Okay, control click to get that layer mask, that selection back from the layer mask. Now, let's paint, save that. Let's paint back here, and these should be combined, yeah, so. Got rid of that issue. Okay, so now there's not this like line through my painting. Okay, that's good, that's good, that's a good thing. Let's multiply so that I can see. Yeah, see, gray is good. I actually need some gray. I need to work in grays more often. I 
But I do want a little bit of a saturated blue back there because that's awesome too. Something's happening here. This is, the line's not disappearing. Why is it not disappearing? I think it's just because Oh, it's 718, the boys are still not up. That's good. Okay. I hope they sleep all morning. I love my kids. Okay. This is looking much better. I do want to get a bit of a saturated blue back there, so let's go there. Let's see if that doesn't do something kind of cool. I'm having trouble because I'm seeing my drawing. See that? Yeah. I'm seeing my drawing, so that some of the mixture and the line for my drawing is kind of mixing with what I'm doing and. It's not cool, man. Not cool. It, man it manipulates it. Don't want it to. I don't want it to affect my choices, my color choices, and my texture. My, you get the drift. I want that saturation of blue back in there. Don't want it to be too descript where it's obvious and painting just right around the fire. Man, that's fun. This is fun, guys. This is fun stuff. Kind of like that back and forth going on because. Okay. Continuing on like a phenom. Okay. Where were we? We were on this layer. Painting. Whoa. That color. <laughs> I go way back in the. I would. Is there going to be a way to show more of the swatches that have been sampled. There's got to be a way to do that because I would like that. I would like to see more of the colors I have chosen. But I, whatever. Okay. Make sure I'm on the right layer. The yellow, yellow one. And we're good to go. Get rid of the rulers. Let's get rid of these first. Boop. Boop. Okay. What do you guys think? How's it looking? Man, that drawing really affects the look. Oh, the opacity is 100%. Let's turn that down, Jiminy. I don't need that drawing at 100% opacity. I just need it in there to see where my stuff's at. No wonder, man. I wonder if that was one of the changes I made that got erased because of my closing program. Okay. Back to layer six. Back to flames. Now I'm looking at these fires, usually one hot spot flame, so I don't know if that'll be the next. Maybe this is the last bright flame layer. I don't know, maybe one more layer could do it, maybe.
my wife and I were having a discussion about I was discussing with her this artist Beeple who's been really inspiring me like his stuff is like amazing but the thing is like Beeple and he admits this he's like I don't know how to draw so it's like okay how does he create amazing work well he creates it through 3D programs so he may not know how to draw but he certainly knows composition, value, uh, the principles of design, like rhythm, pattern, uh, composition, a movement. Uh, I think there's five of them. What was the other one? Balance. Like all these are things you use in your composition. Is composition one of them or is it pattern, balance, pattern, movement? Not sure. I gotta look that up again. But knowing how to manipulate and use. those really makes you a good artist like you can be so so at drawing but if you but if you uh know how to do all that do your head of the game you don't you don't even have to really learn to draw basically so so how does he do it so he he uh so 3d programs so in 3d program working in those programs there's thousands of artists across the world who render a motorcycle render an airplane, render a building, render a piece of machinery. And they do all these and there's these there's these stock st stock uh, what's the word? Not warehouse, but you know a stock a co collection of stock rendered objects that people can grab from and grabs all these pieces of different things that he f can find on whatever websites downloads them uses them in his artwork and so he doesn't need to draw a tree he doesn't need to draw a dog he grabs these off of these sites and but then uses composition lighting value color to make a real powerful piece of art okay i'm going to go back to one of these layers this one i think Pick that color and I'm gonna do a few like this has some wisps across the trunk I'm gonna do a few of those big one down here I think there thin that trunk up a bit up there that, that makes me feel better <laughs> some of these intersections are a little bit too weak too much of the background showing through so I'm trying to punch not punch but bolster up the solidity of this fire in some places a 
I like that kind of like that kind of touching the other part of it kind of like a whoosh, like a flame went like that and did a circle whoosh. a few more wisps across the trunk that ought to be good save I'm going to go back over here and do some two to bolster this up a bit. Uh, what I mean by that is, um, did I not go low enough here? Let's go lower here. Just to make sure. I mean, I think I drew that trunk kind of past the ground. But I just want to make sure. Uh, so when I mean bolster, I mean like a little too much bol dark blue is showing through the flame. I want my flame to be a little more solid. Like that. Back to the yellow again, top layer, come in here, Don't want every single part of this fire to have that hot yellow on it. <laughs> That's looking pretty dope. I'm liking that. Yeah, yeah. So, one reason this artist is inspiring me is because he did a one uh, every, he calls them every days, which is he does not a complete finished artwork every day you should see some of the stuff he does in a day and he doesn't even do it the whole day i mean he does it for like a couple hours i mean he's highly efficient because of how much he's practiced over the years but it's that's impressive oh my gosh i mean i can do one i mean i'm like pretty good way through this painting already and i've only been working like an hour and a half maybe and that's after that little shutdown issue uh, all right so i think my background's pretty good i may come back into the blue the sky back here because uh, you know because Uh, I'm not sure where my flower is going to be, so I don't want to paint. Anyway, I can go back and do that. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to raise the opacity back on my drawing. And maybe turn off the background so I can see. Well, that's kind of crazy. This flames on. Looks like the paper's on fire. And I'm going to paint in some of this foreground so let's do that should I photo bash I, want, I might do that actually but I want it I don't want to do a lot I want to get some texture get some maybe some tree texture in there Trying to think of how I'm going to do this. I can create another mask. Let's create a let's create a selection. Okay, lasso tool. I'm going to go here.
Okay, let's do mark key tool. That's M. Where is this? I just bringing this up so I can get this. So I'm doing a minus selection. Bam. And minus selection. Bam. And I didn't quite get that. Let's do a plus selection. Bam. Oops. Let's get this all the way even here. Bam. Okay. Good enough. I can always crop it all at the end to get it nice and even. Okay. Erase that or make the background disappear again. Lock back the lasso tool. Adding this on here. Just doing the twigs and stuff right now. The leaves I'll save for another time. Okay. Now, do I want to feather this edge at all? Well, feathering is for, uh, sorry, <sighs> when I'm just filling the background, right? I don't think, is, is feathering, can I do a feather on a selection while I'm just painting with a brush over it? I don't know. We'll just paint, see what happens. Okay. I'm gonna go with like a dark, Actually, let's let's go for some reference again. It's, it's reference time. Oops. Now we're looking for tree stump. I don't want to cut tree stump. I want one that's been broken or burnt. So let's go burnt. Yes, so like more like that. Wait, where'd that go? Oh, oh yeah, like that. Oh yeah. So let's save that. To tenacity. Let's save this one. That one's nice. Save as yes. See if we could find one with just some texture. So maybe we could photo bash that in. Maybe, maybe, maybe. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> it looks like a tree's barfing or something. That's hilarious, okay. I like this one, cause you can see it intersect the ground. We'll save that one. Ooh, dang, look at that. There's like hot coals inside that tree stump. That's weird, the ground doesn't look burnt. Maybe somebody literally just is, they're probably, oh yeah, they're just removing the tree stump by burning it. Interesting. Ooh. That's a nice one. Can't remember. Did I get one that had texture that I could just photo bash in? I don't remember. Okay. 
Yeah, I got that one. I might photo bash that one in. I don't know. Anyway, okay. So we got some of that. Let's go get. Let's. Let's. Uh, let's get those. I really like this one. Actually, stop that. Let's. Let's hold on. Stop. Okay. Why did I close that? It wouldn't move. That's why I closed it. Because I'm lagging here. That's why. Okay, this is the layer I made to paint the tree trunk. So yeah, I mean, that's fine. Let's open this. Uh, digital fine art, tenacity. And I'll drag some of these in here. Give this a little reference for what a tr burnt tree stump would look like. Fire. Um, okay, let's move these over a bit. Okay. Should be good for now. That'll give me an idea. This will be interesting. Okay, get that layer again. So, oh shoot, where'd my selection go? Did I really lose that selection? We gotta go back. I'm not doing that whole selection over again. Okay, as soon as I brought that in, it. Okay, I gotta. Let's change this to trunks. Trunks. Background. Trunks. Then. And this one will mask that out. So now, paint here. Boop, boop, boop. Awesome. Let's see if I can bring those in again. All right. didn't even need to select it right if I just paint on that layer it'll mask I don't know why I need to select it that's stupid so now I could do like selections within this I think yeah see that that enables me to do selections within that masked selection cool okay let's do some painting not that color, obviously. Okay, now what colors? <laughs> I like how, look at this tree stump. This is actually a little bit of a blue gray. Let's see that color real quick. Look at that, it's greenish. Bluish greenish. <laughs> I guess more. <clears throat> I guess more of a uh, bluish, but it, 
It's interesting. If I do a new layer and then I do that, that's going to Yeah, it's only going to paint within that whatever marks I make on the other one. So, what would be the point of that? That would be... I'm trying to think if, that's, if I can apply that here some way. I don't know. Anyway. Okay. Anyway, I'm not too interested in. Okay, so I want a blue. Dark, dark. Yeah, something like that. Like kind of that sketchy look. Uh, I love it. It's just like pencil, you know. Like I love pencil. How it, some of your marks kind of go over the top of each other and like just create this fun I think this will be kind of this is a nice movement here this uh the trunk kind of coming down and Establish that edge right there. Do I like that edge shape? It's fine, I guess, for now. Just trying to think ahead exactly how I want my stump to converge with the ground. I may delete that. Oh, if I delete that layer mask, I show everything underneath. How do I just like so I could go in and like do this and like inverse selection, delete and delete everything on that layer that's outside the selection. Then I can go back and oh manipulate manipulate that edge because I don't want I don't know if I want that edge to be like totally hard edge like that, right? Might blur that out a bit. Uh, but for now, we're just gonna have a little fun using that, using that uh, selection to paint within it without worrying about going over the background. So. Let's do a little, do a little painting. Okay, so. I imagine that flower is gonna be like a hot red color. And then I really like contrasting like a lighter, like really vibrant blue. So I'm imagining that this tree trunk is going to have some serious blueage going on. Let's choose a little darker color here. Let's go in here and kind of like I gotta try to establish what's gonna be because this is 
burnt out tree trunks. So I mean, is is this the back piece? And maybe I mean that's pretty cool. Although if this is the hole and this is the outside edge of the tree, that doesn't make too much sense. So it might be like maybe this is like that. That make a little more sense. Yes, yes it would. Now, I'm painting on the same layer I just painted on. How do you make multiple? So am I going to do all my rendering within this one layer on within this one layer mask? Or am I going to do like I did in the background, which is every layer, every color is on a different layer. I mean, I want it to be kind of separate so I can So I can manage it later. Okay. New layer. Just gonna do this. I don't know if I want all my okay. I'm gonna go back to this layer. I'm going to actually select this color real quick just so I have it. Don't know where it is on this queue, but now I'm going to paint out all this because. I really want to do these on separate layers. Okay. Oh, get off there. Okay, now I just wanted to preserve that edge. Now I go up here. I have my selection selected still. So it's not a big deal. If I, uh, Actually, let's just separate layer. Paint this in first, and then just delete that other layer. Man, I do things so weird. I don't know if this. out for a second. I'm getting glare on my screen. A little darker, but hey, you know how it goes. So I just delete this layer. Beep. Delete the layer, yes. Now I go back to layer nine. I still have my selection selected. Selected. Let's do a darker color. Let's save. 
Really? We're doing this again? Gosh, gotta save the tenacity three. Wow. Three. Just gotta remember to erase those other tenacities so I don't get confused. Okay. Man, that's so stupid. I like that edge a little better. It's kind of a cooler shape. All right, now add the layer again. Then we're going to some dark dark darks need some darks on the bottom of this thing and on the side a little bit I'll hide the selection it's very distracting I can always get so some of my background right there that gray is a little not solid but it's not an issue I could just go back and solidify it later which is cool I love this sketchy sketchy sketchiness Okay, we're gonna do some of these cross. Crap, why is that gone all the way to there? Uh oh, that never was painted in. <laughs> Funny. I just want to get the uh, essence of these crossed burn marks. Don't have to describe every single one of them. And kind of this, oops, I didn't want that small of a brush. Bigger brush, oh, helps if you hit the right key. Um, what's my selection? Okay, that's my selection. So right in here, Kind of describe some value changes in here a little bit. I switched to the hair cross brush because the brush was just too confusing. It's nice to see the size of your brush visually though, but Sometimes there's just too much distraction. Oops, my eraser is too big. See, it's nice to know the size of your tool sometimes. Okay, I do need to get a little thing going over here. Gosh, I love painting. It's kind of like drawing, actually. For me, it is. I like drawing. And I need to see this as in my brush, so. Oh, it's not tab, it's caps locks. Cap, caps lock. So sorry. A 
I'll have to get some rim lighting on the edge of this foreground. That would be awesome. Which makes me think I should bring this dark down a little bit because if I put in some rim lighting, uh oh, boys are up. Yo! Whoa! Ah! Mm -hmm. in the toilet. Hi, bud. Whoa! Whoa! Do you, do you know you're on video right now? Look at. Say hello to everybody. That's the camera right there. <laughs> okay. Video, video, video. Like I'm painting for everybody to watch. All those thousands of people. Thousands and thousands of you people. You paint? Like, is this painting? Yeah, it's painting. It's not real paint, it's digital painting. Digital. What's digital painting? What's digital painting? Are you going are you gonna go with that or what? I am. Boo! Boo! Alright. Well, it's time to cut this video shorty short. Oh. Yes, he went out to create some contrast there somehow. Rim lighting will help. Thanks for watching. See it.